Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So today we're going to cover off frothy names and that's not cappuccinos. Uh, we've got lots of stocks that have some pretty high um, ratios on the on the actual enterprise value and I thought um, I found I came across an interesting list one that I don't have the technology to create uh, but it was pretty interesting it was just sitting on Twitter and it was from uh, Goldman Sachs Bloomberg and fact set and somebody had taken and made this list of stocks trading at 20 times revenue uh, for 2022, so not even current revenue. They'd already um, given them 2021 revenue and, and used this uh, scale of their enterprise value based on 2022. And these companies have a market cap larger than 10 billion. Oh, I think I got that in there twice. Um, enterprise sales value of 20. Uh, so what that what does that mean? So it means that the, um, the company's revenue... Uh, the, if if they could keep this level of revenue going for the next 20 years, um, that would be worth the enterprise value. And typically, um, that's, that's just a really high level. Uh, so these are very simple... Um, scan nothing nothing courageous here uh, but what we want to cover off today is just look in on these stocks and just check out their price action because I think it's it's quite interesting they've been some of the leadership names um, that are out there and so we can use those to to kind of talk about the froth and if you have any questions about um, uh, the gregschnell.com website uh, feel free to head over there uh, there's two of us now working together on it Dwight Galusha and myself and hopefully you'll find some interesting stuff there so if that can interest you at all uh, feel free to go there and so we're going to start off with crisp therapeutics and what we are looking for on uh, these stocks obviously they're they're expensive because they're so over well, not necessarily overvalued, but very highly valued. And the point I want to make as we go through these stocks is look at them from the perspective of would you buy them. And these are actually in the order of um, worst to best or most expensive to best. And I think uh, this CRISPR therapeutics is it was over two hundred or something. Um, and and the in terms of its multiplier and then it goes all the way down to 20 times so we have this this was the most expensive stock out of the group and um, compared to its enterprise or its uh, revenues so what we see here is an uptrend and this uptrend is breaking the relative strength is breaking for me uh, on something that's going up rapidly uh, that would be a sell signal for, for for me once you start to see this relative strength uptrend break, I would probably want to cash out. And the reason is this has gone from 100 to 220 and back. You know, I'd, I'd probably just try to take off the 50% that's still sitting there. And then the full stochastic is starting to roll over. These are weekly charts, just to make sure. And then here you have your PPO starting to roll over and lose momentum from a very high level. And again, you know, we don't know how high is high, but uh, typically 10% is really a big number. So these stocks trading up around 20, I guess uh, if you wanted to, I could go show you Tesla um, just to get a feel. So here's Tesla and it's uh, PE ratio or it's uh, PPO value is a 20%, 25% value. So Tesla is obviously a pretty heady um, stock, but but the point I wanted to make was that these other companies um, have this crazy future enterprise value. And what might be up for Tesla, the reason it's not on this list, is that its future enterprise value in 2022, um, or the current price of its future, of its enterprise value versus sales in 2022 might get under that 20 ratio. So anyway, with all of that, uh, we'll keep going. So again, this is up at the top will be the scooter ranking. So some stocks will have that, other stocks won't. And then we have uh, the relative strength ranking, which is compared to the S&P 500. The full stochastic, which is just literally where's the price in the last 14 weeks in the high part of the range or the low part of the range. And because it takes a smoothing, 
you know, it uses a three week average or whatever, it'll never get to a hundred. It'll never get to zero. Um, it, it trades in that range. Um, and then you have your price with a 10 week and a 40 week moving average volume and the different colors are for up weeks and down weeks. And then the PPO value again, sitting up here around 20, um, pretty heady. And as you can tell, Tesla's up around 25. So, um, this one at, um, at a ratio of 21% is pretty high. So anyway, uh, that gives you an idea of what we're going to look at. And now I'm just going to move it to the view all button. And so what I've tried to do on these charts is just go through and annotate what I would look for. And for me, something that's run up this quick and is starting to break its uptrend in relative strength, to me, that's a change in character. So I would probably want to take my profits. Um, I'm not trying to hold for... Um, forever. I just want to hold while the, while the trend works. Now, if it's a short trend that's just started, I'd probably hold through it. Um, in this case, the stock ran up, ran sideways, and then took off to the moon. Does it have another moonshot in it? Sure. But um, with a, a high ratio, it's probably not one that I want to look at. Okay, so here's Snowflake. And Snowflake is uh, a new uh, software company that's just IPO'd here in September. The stock rallied sideways and then took off. Now this scale is so dwarfed here. The stock opened at $120 a share and went to $450 or $430 and um, has pulled back. So after a threefold move, 300% move in three months, it's pulled back. Now we're sitting right at its uptrend line and its downtrend line right in the junction here. And the real question is, does it break it down or break out or does it need to break down and then kind of build a bigger base before it can start to go higher on the second one? So I think if it trades above this uh, black line, you probably want to own it and just keep your stop tight. And if it starts to roll back over on you, then you'd want to um, just let somebody else own it at the time. So this um, AI is the ticker symbol and C3 is the company name. So what we see here is this has been building a flag pattern and is breaking out this week up another 11%. So uh, all the other indicators haven't started to work yet. So we'll, just because the, the time is too short for, as an example, for the full stochastic, it needs a 14 week period when we're on a weekly chart. And so it won't calculate a value until it gets those. Scooter ranking um, has a couple of criteria. It doesn't meet any of those yet. Anyway, that's why we don't have some of these indicators starting to show up. Uh, so here's plug power. And plug power is a renewable energy uh, company, one of the one of the ones really vaulting lately and its scooter ranking for the mid caps is up around 99 percent you can see this has been pinned near the high end of the range for two years and uh, with all the initiatives from government that's probably going to continue um, but one of the things that we have here is the stock has been running up and looking it's hard to even see it on the weekly chart on the daily chart it was looking like a bit of a flag pattern but it's moving up again um, so it's up another 10 percent this week after a huge push uh, you know from the 30 dollar area to the 73 dollar area flagging and wanting to take off uh, big volumes a couple of weeks ago everything is up trending so there's nothing to stay say sell here it's still all bullish. Um, if I started to see this relative strength line start to break, even on a, a parabolic move, I would just try to capture as much as I could out of the gain rather than um, parabolic moves don't usually end that way. Uh, they usually come straight back down. So I want to be careful um, about that. CrowdStrike Holdings, so IPO'd about a year and a half ago, uh, went sideways for the year. After the March lows, it's had a big run from, say, $30 to $230, uh, so quite quite a move, obviously. And then we have, uh, and we can say that about every one of these stocks, and then uh, we have the big uptrend line, and we're threatening it this week. Um, it's been range trading sideways for six weeks and really hasn't been able to break out and then this week started to break down so we'll see if that holds um, we did have kind of a two-month uptrend here where the stock moved from 140 to 240 so a hundred dollar move in five six weeks um, the real question is can the stock maintain that sort of momentum probably not and then the other thing you want to watch for so back here it had a big uh, uptrend and then pulled back and then took about a year before it started to get back on its horse and start taking off again we have an uptrend in relative strength here. 
and that's probably the bigger uptrend but right now we've broken the quick one and if this was just going to pull back to let, let's even say the 200 day moving average that's or 40 week that's still 60 dollars below from here and it might be a little easier to buy it down there um, but we do have an uptrend in the momentum and when this uptrend line breaks for, for me that's another reason to start thinking about a sell signal so I would be um, that that's kind of how I would treat it so here's bill.com holdings and this stock I PO'd at $22 or so and then went to 154 that's a bit of a move um, it's now moving back below its 10 week moving average and there is a trend line here um, I didn't really find a trend line off the lows that worked. I mean, I could have, whatever, put this crazy one here and we're just breaking it now. Um, whenever you're trying to find a trend line, I think the most important thing, you always want to try and find at least two points that make sense. And just because it had a steep vertical line, so as an example, here was a steep one and then it went sideways for a while. What we're noticing on this is that the PPO is starting to roll over hard and as it rolls over I'm going to draw my trend line here it's starting to make lower highs lower lows and that gets more concerning if the relative strength is going to start breaking down I probably want to let it go as well so those are clues I look for uh, when I want to sell things once they start to underperform or change their relative strength uptrend I would probably uh, want to let go. So what I've done here is I noticed that there was a trend excluding the COVID low um, through the stock and it's been heady uh, but once that starts to break um, I'd want to be careful. So the fact that it's rolling over with a lower high in momentum here getting very close on this relative strength line I don't think I'd allow it to have much more weakness. There is a horizontal line that can be drawn here at $100 and perhaps a person would want to use that as support. That could also be a choice. So looking at Coupa software, um, this one to me is already on a sell signal. So let's talk about what it is that I don't like. So Coupa has a scooter ranking for three years sitting up at the top of the range here. And it's been one of the top performers since December. It's actually started to become um, an underperforming stock relative to its peer group. And that's in the mid caps. So it has a scooter ranking of nine now. And one of the things I like about the scooter ranking is it does show... Um, a shorter period of weakness it doesn't just compare against all the stocks in the market um, it only compares against its group which I think is helpful um, so if the group was too large then it would always outperform the bottom half by making the group smaller um, putting a minimum dollar amount and that kind of thing for the market cap uh, it actually rolls over and here we see that it's now in the bottom 10% of price action compared to its peers even though it's relatively close to its prior high in December at 360 um, this is starting to break down very quickly I didn't draw an uptrend line but I think we could all see that it would be broken um, but my my relative strength ranking compared to the S&P 500 is starting to break down and my scooter ranking has already said the price performance is, is dropping quickly. Full stochastic is rolling over. So to me, I would not wait to see if this holds at the 200-day moving average. I would probably um, want to see this uh, reset totally. And we can see that the stock has done this before. Rolled down, we, we saw a lower high in momentum back in uh, early 2020, and then we had the COVID low, and as it came out of that, it was a huge move. It really, I mean, it, let's be fair, it's done a little bit. This was 315, it went to 369, but for six months uh, on the chart, it looks a lot smaller than the big move up it had, and so it's kind of consolidated sideways, and we've seen that on Amazon and on Shopify and a few other stocks like that where they had their big moves early and then they kind of within a range traded sideways uh, but we've seen other names you know go through the escalation curve so here's uh, zscaler in canada we would say zscaler uh, but zscaler is uh, trending higher and we're sitting right on the 10-week moving average the uh, relative strength line has been holding it's starting to turn down here and you can see back in here when that broke that was a pretty good place to let somebody else own it and you would have waited a year a year and a half to get back on this stock's horse the the ppo is making a lower high um 
and making a higher low here so it's a real question is it going to turn back up it's at 15 percent which is a pretty high level but if this was going to start to break down this trend line start to break all these relative strength items i would want to be a seller of this and then uh, we started to see a wobble in the scooter ranking and then it started to break down it hasn't gotten below 75 yet it's still a top performer and when we say top performer with the scooter ranking when its price action is better than 75 percent of its peers that's what this blue line represents um, if it's sitting up there that's pretty heady and pretty strong nothing wrong with that okay so here's um our our gents our Gen X, I guess, or Gen X, maybe that's the way to say that. Anyway, uh, we have an uptrend line here, and, and the stock obviously made a big heady move and then has been kind of grinding higher. We have a, a relative strength line that's uh, being tested, I'll say, this week. The full stochastic has come off boil and is just below 80%, and if it was to roll down there, that would be another uh, concerning sign. But so far, everything on this chart doesn't say sell. It says concern, but not sell. And um, I circled this just to say it's at 10%, just uh, pointing out what the level is. Now here's Cloudflare. We've seen this this name floated around a lot on the TV networks. And what we see is a big heady run for five months and that's starting to crack. Um, the uptrend here has been going on, you know, from September, this was a $35 stock and is now a $75 stock, um, more than a double. And it's kind of chopped sideways for two months but anyway it's starting to break that uptrend line uh, on the close of business Tuesday so if this is going to continue I think I want to let somebody else own it the volume's dropping off nobody really stepping in to buy it earlier this year so to me this stock probably resets down maybe to the 50 I don't know uh, but probably not one I want to hold on to so here's Appian Corp. Uh, big move. This thing is still trending higher. I don't have any reason to sell it other than it's testing prior high. You want to make sure it makes it through that. Your PPO trend line is still intact. This thing has a PPO uh, trend at 28%. That's very heady. Um, not many of those around. Uh, but what we see, a big sudden move. Still volume coming into the stock, uh, pushing it higher. So, so far, everything looks fine on there. If my PPO starts to break my trend line, my relative strength line, I'm probably going to want to let somebody else hold it. Um, Zoom video. This one, I really don't expect it to recover. And the reason is I think it hit its maximum growth in the latter half of 2020. Um, every growth metrics it have might still continue to climb, but definitely not at the rate of acceleration it had. So I'd, be, I'd probably be a seller. But this one's testing its... 40 week moving average scooter ranking was a top performer it's now um, coming undone you have a relative strength line starting to decline um, same thing on price action so you were over 588 you're sitting here at 350 or 360 you're down 200 bucks um, again once these relative strength trend lines start to break i want to try and use that to pull the trigger uh, when when something that was in a giant uptrend starts to underperform and I could have drawn the uptrend line on the PPO here, but when it started to break, the relative strength line breaking, price action breaking, I probably just want to take profits in a fast name like that. Okay, TA. Um, stock is trending up, sitting right on its trend line right now, sitting right on its relative strength line. Scooter ranking is now below 50%. It's wobbled like that before, so let's not get too negative. I think more importantly, if its relative strength uptrend starts to crack, I, I'd probably want to leave. And we're seeing the PPO have less momentum now. It's uh, just around 8%, uh, but starting to roll down. All of these things, I would say, are sitting on a sell signal, um, waiting to fire. The scooter ranking below 50 is probably a real clue for me um, if, if we start to break these uptrend lines. Mongo, uh, this one, price heading higher, traded sideways for seven weeks, so lost a little bit of its momentum. Everything is still positive. There's no, nothing saying sell the chart. The only thing, uh, if you start to make two-month lows here, you might want to think about it. You're going to be below your 10-week. Um, it's just, uh, so far, everything is uptrending, so as long as you're comfortable with that. And the, the volume is declining meaningfully so maybe a little bit less interest in it but it still looks pretty strong 
Unity software. I'm trying to push up. This week it's actually made a, a higher high, higher low, but definitely working on the lower end of the bar. And I guess I forgot to um, turn off my notification, so let me just do that. Um, okay, so we've we've got the the stock holding its trend line, as you can see here in black. If that starts to break, I'd want to probably let somebody else hold it because it's such a high flyer. You're sitting at around 150, it went up to 174, but it IPO'd at $52 or something. So that's pretty crazy. Okay, um, Garden Health. This has been a, a really nice run from 59 to 168, uh, pushing up very, very high. Um, same thing here. I've got some nice trends. Everything's still working its way higher. It's kind of making a crown here on the right hand side but let's just give it some room to work if it comes down to the trend line and holds um, you know you want to try and hold the winner so you've got to give it a little bit of room to work anyway it's it had a nice breakout back here of the 100 area um, you're sitting up around 168 that's just bullish so like that um, 10x genomics we see a big uptrend line here the stock is really doing well the one thing i would say is there's a negative divergence hitting the stock uh, right now on its ppo as it looks like it's starting to roll over here so that's one clue for me i wouldn't like to see this higher or lower high and i've got an uptrend uh, from the ppo before now if it's going to make a lower high that would be cautionary um, again are you going to wait until it gets all the way down to the trend line that's probably 50 bucks uh, from the high so 190 to let's just say it breaks in here at 150 a little bit concerning so anyway um, stock looks okay other than the momentum trend is clearly starting to wane um, datadog this one's a really popular name so when I uh, when I look at it, what I see is I could have drawn the trend line here on relative strength, and then after it kind of ran through that, it's pulled back. But you haven't really lost anything on the stock if you got out on the first one. Now it's a flatter trend, and I think if it's going to break down again, that would be meaningful. You're right on your your uh, relative strength line that we've drawn based on this location and then you've got lower highs in the scooter ranking just suggesting on each rally it's getting weaker um, you're sitting right around the 50 percent level so if it's going to start performing in the bottom half of the stocks uh, might be a reason to let it go and the ppo looks like it's going to make a second lower high in momentum at this point so unless the stock figures out a way to kind of pop through this downtrend uh, looks to me like something you'd probably want to make sure you got a tight stop on. Shopify. So I'm sitting uh, on the Canadian side of the border. And this is a Canadian company that's done really, really well this year. But much like uh, that other stock where a lot of the heady gains were made um, in the summer months. And then really it's chugged sideways. It had a nice push in early December for two weeks and then not really much. So it was at 11.07 and we're sitting... Um, What's our current price uh, at 11.59? So we're sideways, and the real question is, can it break out? Now this one was trading at a pretty aggressive level. I think it's still going to be 28 times revenue um, in 2022 currently, and you can see the volume is declining. PPO looks like it wants to make a lower high here, so this one's looking a little frothy and perhaps wants a couple of days off. I don't know if it just comes down to this black trend line. Um, it is a pretty popular name, um, but you can see it hasn't gone below the 40-week moving average very often, so uh, that's sitting down here around a thousand bucks. So one to watch. Uh, again, the scooter ranking starting to let go and it's starting to behave um, at one of the lower sco scooter levels that it's had. So if the stock is, I'll call it overpriced in terms of value uh, and wants to pull back a little bit, who'd be too surprised? And maybe you get a chance to buy it down around 900 or 800. I don't know. Um, after pay, this one's been crazy bullet higher. It was down around five bucks in March and sitting at 120, 115. Uh, pretty nice move. So far, there's no reason to sell it. It just keeps working its way higher. Everything is turned up. So that one looks all right. 
Um, okay, we'll speed up a little bit as we get towards the bottom of this list, but what we'll see here on Trade Desk is this is starting to roll over. You've broken your relative strength uptrend. You're starting to break your price uptrend. Um, here's Nova Cure, same thing. You're up against your trend line. If it's going to start to break down, you want to be a little bit cautious when this PPO is starting to break. Um, to me, that's a, a nice place to start to think about exiting. DocuSign, very popular in the whole real estate transaction business, and it's very close to seven month lows on its relative strength. Uh, scooter ranking starting to fail, so starting to slip a little bit. Palantir still looks like it wants to keep going. New highs this week. Um, no reason to sell it yet. Looks like it wants to keep going. So Viva System, sideways, sideways, sideways. Um, the one thing I like is the full stochastic is starting to improve, and if this downtrend can start to turn and break out here, that might be a nice entry, but so far hasn't broken out. Fastly, this name is sitting right up against this trend line. So this is right at the peak uh, of the March lows and now starting to work its way. Um, trying to break out to the upside. I do like the fact that my downtrend on the PPO is starting to break out to the top side. So that gives me a reason to want to own it. Um, if it was to start to break out here, that's a pretty bullish push. Market access holdings. This one's got a big two-year trend line. And is it going to start to snap? Some of the times on these COVID lines, I've just ignored them to get the real trend in the stock without the COVID dip. Uh, but the PPO is starting to break on this one and turn down here. So this looks to me like it might be ready for a bigger correction. Futu Holdings has taken off to the moon. I mean, it's just literally a moonshot. So in this case, I'd use a break on my relative strength to try and keep the gains. Biogene, uh, this one just pushed up really nicely. What a move here from 225 to 375. Um, very heady indeed. You got an uptrend, so so far everything's working, but I'd probably keep track of this relative strength. And if that started to fail, let somebody else, if you're a trader. Um, Atlassian, this is right on its trend line. I don't want to start to see it break, but all the other clues are starting to show up. So I would be a little more leery about that. Um, here's Slack Technologies. They got bought by Salesforce, I think. Um, anyway, uh, maybe it was Oracle. I think it was Salesforce. Anyway, uh, with that purchase, uh, stock's gone sideways, so I could delete it. I just kept it on the list because it was a part of it. Uh, here's um, Replogen uh, Biotech. And you can see a big three-year uptrend here if you're a trader. Um, you're trading out of an uptrend, that's for sure. Uh, the one thing I would say is the stock is, you know, behaving well. So even if it came down to the 40 week, you might still be able to just keep holding it if you like longer term. But if you're trading it for the sudden move it's had and the high enterprise value, you're starting to lose this uh, momentum uptrend and perhaps you want to let it go. But again, it really depends on your trading style. If you're, uh, if you like the long term hold, so far that's a good uptrend. Keyance. Uh, this trend is really nice and strong, but we're testing it this week. Uh, this uh, relative strength line is starting to break. And here, when you see the PPO line starting to break, relative strength starting to break, and price line starting to break, if you're a trader, for me, that's a pretty good exit signal. And I think um, Elastic is my last stock in this group. But what I want to show you here is you've got your uptrend. The stock is you know, kind of crowning up here at the top, you've broken your relative strength. Scooter ranking is still strong. So it, I find sometimes it can be uh, a little bit slow on the signal, especially when the stock has had a big move lately. Um, but the PPO trend is starting to come very close to um, testing. So without question, it's been a really nice stock to own. I think the real question on these high value names is how much uh, how much time do you want to give them to keep hanging around? So, um, by the way, my, my uh, overall market signals are telling me I want to be very, very cautious here. We're at really high levels. The NASDAQ has a PPO uh, screaming up in the area of the 1999-2000 top. So uh, that's heady for me. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, and you can also see the recordings on the Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Have a good week trading. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.